Other members likely on the panel for um, One Nation, One Poll and exploring the possibility that includes the Cabinet Secretary, the ex-CJI, the ex-ECI retired judges, constitutional experts and political leaders. Earlier, remember, former President Ramnath Kovind, he is going to be on the panel, reportedly is going to be heading the panel. All of this is source-based information. We'll try to bring you more details on this. We have CNN News 18's Pail Mehta getting us more. Pail, tell us more about the other members that, have, that are likely now going to be on the panel. What we are given to understand, Aisha, is very important. We are given to understand this is going to be a comprehensive committee. The committee will not only have representatives from the a political, uh, you know, platform, but political leaders, but also, you know, people who have the understanding of the subject. This is a very, very complicated legislation because you are looking at overhauling the entire voting system. You are looking at overhauling the entire uh, framework as far as uh, elections are concerned. So obviously, there will be feedback which will be taken in, uh, taken, taken in from you know, uh, former uh, uh, Chief Justice of India and former uh, legal expert uh, covering that now. Also the fact that they will also be taking the input from former CECs uh, to understand what the implications could be. The Cabinet Secretary most importantly will be also part of this because this is a developing situation. And also the fact that yes, there are various people who have their inputs to be whether it is legal uh, fraternity or whether it is otherwise is there. And uh, to also look at, you know, how this can really take shape because like I said, it's a complicated legislation and Ramnath Kovind uh, is not an ordinary person himself. He is a very, very uh, legally sound person. He is the former uh, prime minister. Uh, he is the former president of the country, and he's also been a former governor of the country as well uh, of, of the state of Bihar. So that's that's the importance that is being given. It will be important to see what the outcome really is. But it is going to be a long term exercise. It is going to be a detailed exercise because you don't change laws like this in the country overnight by just the whims and fancies of any government. It has to take a comprehensive shape because you're looking at making amendments to at least five or six, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sections of the constitution and these are constitution amendments, which essentially mean it's for the benefit of our viewers, when you, when you move in a constitutional amendment, that has to be passed by two-thirds majority, which means the government also needs to have these numbers in place uh, in the parliament, that is the most important part as well. You know, one big question that is arising about whether or not this is going to be very confusing for voters, because again, that is the main focus of this One Nation, One Poll. Do you think voters will be informed enough to be able to conduct this in a way that they're, so that they're not confused? Do you think specific awareness campaigns will have to be conducted? Certainly, you know, nothing can be done in this country without taking the voters into confidence, because Absolutely. eventually they are the biggest stakeholders. They are the ones who have to come out and vote as well. But you know, you've seen this happening. For example, uh, you know, when you have the Lok Sabha elections, <coughs> we also simultaneously have elections uh, to uh, states like Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. So what do people do? Do they vote for a particular government in the centre and what is particular government in the state? That also is a complicated thing as well. But the argument of the government has been, and even in the response that they've submitted before parliament has been very simple. That, you know, most of the time is spent in fighting some elections with the other, for which, of course, uh, model code of conduct kicks in, various uh, things take place, voters have to be lured. So all of this is a waste of exercise, of course, because, you know, a lot of time goes into that. So the Prime Minister himself has, uh, has very, very uh, importantly said that, you know, when you have a situation like this, then half the time your time is lost in, uh, in, in contesting elections. So why not have a situation when you can spend the whole of five years in serving the people by finishing the elections for once and for all? But again, you know, we've been saying that this is a very, very complicated legislation. This is like overhauling the election system in this country. It has to be done with the consensus of all. And that is something which the government has highlighted in its response to parliament, that it has to be a consensus that has to be taken at various platforms. For example, why would uh, uh, Karnataka allow this to go through when Karnataka has been in power only for the last three to four months? So this has to be taken into account before one can come up with anything. But this is the framework which is coming up, which clearly means that this has to be a process which has to be followed. It can't be done overnight and the appeal to, uh, to uh, ask all states to follow this has been made at multiple levels and multiple platforms and none other than the Prime Minister himself. Pail, I'm going to request that you stay with us. We're going to listen in to some reactions that are coming in. He goes everywhere and claims India is mother of democracy. If that is so, how can uh, the government take unilateral decisions without consultation uh, with political parties and parliament? What is the ideological difference they are trying to point out? Yes, we are all independent political parties. We have our own ideological political positions. But we have come together on a common understanding that BJP's rule has been proved to be misrule. BJP's governance has proved to be misgovernance. And Mr. Modi's rule 
for the past nine and a half years has been proved to be disastrous, complete disastrous in order to save India, save constitution, save democracy. BJP has to be thrown out of power and uh, we are all convinced on that issue. We are together. We're crossing back over to our guest who remains with us, Mr. Rajagopalan, who is a senior journalist as well. Uh, Mr. Rajagopalan, what I wanted to ask you more about is, while you might say that this is going to be, a, that this is merely a distraction in view of the India Alliance meeting, which is taking place in Mumbai, the point is that this could be a very real bill that could be brought up in Parliament. This could be the uh, real situation in the near future when it comes to elections. One nation, one poll. What are the possible obstacles that you could see in terms of implementation? How do you think this could could affect campaigns there will be lots of obstacles because the parliament has to pass the registration and moreover it is going to be a very very tough task for the narendra modi government and equally tough for the opposition parties you asked me a pertinent question one example of what d raja the cpa central general secretary has just now been very angry very very angry that is what Mr. Government and Narendra Modi and BJP wanted. BJP wanted opposition to be in jittery. And you know, instead of talking about the legal aspects and financial aspects and, and you know, for that matter, during VP Singh's time, Vishwanath Pratap Singh Prime Minister's time, Dinesh Goswami was Law Minister. He brought a electoral reforms. TN Session brought a electoral reforms. About you know at least eight former chief election commissioners, Gen Gopal Swami, M. S. Gill, T. S. Krishnamurti, even Sushil Chandra, the latest one, Rajiv Kumar, have been writing to the government. We want one nation, one poll, because it will save ten thousand crores, madam, not one or two rupees, Aisha. It's not one easy joke. We cannot be talking about Adani and China repeatedly. You have to go forward, you know. This is a move by the government, of course. It is going to affect the BJP also because only last year you held the elections in Uttar Pradesh. It is going to be a major setback to Yogi Adityanath if elections are to be held in UP along with Lok Sabha in May 2024. In another six months time, you have to prepare for two places, one for Lok Sabha, one for Assembly. So it is going to be a difficult task. This task will let us wait and watch. The government, as Payal Mehta has just now mentioned, it consists of legal luminaries, cabinet secretary, administrative expenses, no experiences they have. A lot for that. Any district collector, any district superintendent of police will have a major election strategies because they oversee the elections at the bottom level. They have grown up to the cabinet secretariat level and the cabinet secretary is going to be part of this committee. And this also shows the immense confidence the prime minister reposes on Ramana Govind and the committee. Prime minister has been articulating this for the last five meetings. In five ses uh, general public fora, he articulated. Apart from that, I would like to tell during UPA regime, EM Sudarshan Nachiyappan, Congress MP, headed a joint parliamentary committee of 21 members consisting of 18 parties. He gave a report that one nation, one poll is possible. That is why Narendra Modi is taking forward. He is taking the UPA regime resolution, taking forward. Why the Congress is in jittery now? Why should the Raja get angry? Why the opposition parties are dancing and drama, song and drama? Why? Because it is affecting them. You can talk about Adani, but not this uh, one nation, one poll. You can talk about China, but you have to talk about one nation, one poll. It is a matter which has been gaining momentum for the last 25 to 30 years in Indian politics. The electoral reform is important. It will curtail black money. It will curtail defections. Lot of things are involved in this. Therefore, this exercise is a laborious one. Very, very interesting. But we have to wait and watch. Will the Constitution Amendment Bill will be introduced or it is going to be a financial bill? So these are all certain things.